West Ham 2, Everton 0. The epitome of a six-pointer, especially when both teams were on 15 points going into this game and a win could see them both come out of the relegation zone. I think it was a game where we have to focus first of all on West Ham and David Moyes because when a game like this occurs every now and then, there's a lot of focus on the team that just lost the game, in this case Everton, who had a terrible performance, but we're going to come on to them because I want to give credit to David Moyes and West Ham, who I think played really well and managed this game really well. I think going into the game, the fact that David Moyes decided to go with three at the back, which isn't an unfamiliar formation for West Ham, but it's not what they've been regularly playing this season. I think playing the three to counter Everton, playing Dominic Alvaro-Lewin and Damari Gray up top, who could have posed more of a threat today had it not been for the excellent defending of all three of their centre-backs. I think you've got to give credit to Declan Rice in midfield, who him and uh, Paqueta, who were just a two-man midfield today, compared to evidence three of Idrissa Garnage, Andre Onana and Alex Awobi, and they, they were dominated. They let them have the ball every now and then. However, they never really troubled them, and that's because West Ham's shape and formation completely nullified them and they weren't able to get forward and create chances and that was because of Declan Rice and Paqueta and their energy and their passing and their the forward runs the drive the determination I think it was fantastic performance from the midfield I think you all have to give credit to Mikel Antonio who especially for that second goal the the run down the right hand side completely doing James Tarkovsky who it was a terrible terrible moment in the game because he completely mis misjudged the tackle. He thought he could have got there. There was no way he could have got there. He should have just stayed on his feet, tried to jockey Antonio, tried to get more defensive support and cover and try to make Antonio play backwards. Instead, he lunged in, made Antonio decision quite easy and he just decided to skin him, go past him, put a lovely cross in, maybe a bit of a deflection and then there was that man, Jared Bowen. And credit to Jared Bowen because he's come under a lot of criticism this season, especially since Last season and the season before, there were a lot of calls for him to get into the into the England squad for the World Cup to go to Qatar. Unfortunately, missed out, but play like that again, and I'm sure he'll be in that squad again one day soon because he was a difference maker today. He had that cutting clinical edge in the final third that both teams were lacking, and both teams have been lacking all season, really, which is why they find themselves in this kind of position. And now I think he's just West Ham's top score scorer. I think he's only still got four goals this season, but... If he carries on, if Mikel Antonio carries on, if the whole team carries on and plays the way they did today, then I think West Ham should find themselves nowhere near the relegation zone come the end of the season, which is where they're expected to be as well, by the way, can I just say, considering the players that they have. And now on to Everton, who I have mentioned a little bit, because where do you go from here as Everton and Frank Lampard? Because coming into this game, they recently lost to Southampton at home, which was can only be described as an absolute disaster. And I think this is where in, the inexperience of Frank Lampard has come in a little bit. Because I know he has managed to stop in. I know he has managed at Chelsea in the Champions League. However, I do think that they weren't Southampton and West Ham, they weren't must-win games but they were absolutely must-not-lose games. And the fact that they've lost both of them, one at home, which is absolutely scandalous, and now they've lost again to West Ham away from home, I think there are a lot, a lot of questions to be asked. Especially because I think the players are better than they are. I think you've got the likes of Jordan Pickford, England's number one goalkeeper. The back three today, I mean, Yerry Mina, Connor Cody, James Tarkovsky, they're all Premier League quality centre-backs. And at times, they showed that. I think Connor Cody was really, really good today. I think he made a couple of really great blocks, um, especially with late on, I think, from Jared Bowen, who's running through on goal. I think initially, Connor Cody did make the error. He misjudged the flight of the ball, and he should have done better with it. But he recovered amazingly well. I think Yeremina also had a good game today. I think James Tarkovsky kind of let the back three down today. But... All in all, they are all Premier League quality centre-backs. And then, going to the midfield, I think defensively, Onana, Idrissa Gay, Alex Iwobi, defensively, they're a solid unit. Okay, you can argue there's a lack of creativity there, and there definitely is. I think Alex Iwobi has come on leaps, leaps and bounds under Frank Lampard from when he first joined the Everton. I mean, coming in for roughly, I think, 35 million, which was honestly deft. I don't know how... Arsenal managed to be able to get that much for him and then 
you can kind of be playing on the left, he kind of plays on the right, and you just kind of think to yourself, Everton made a massive mistake, and maybe they have paying that much for Alex Iwobi. I still think that, but under Frank Lampard, it, he's definitely most improved, and he's shown he's a Premier League quality centre midfielder of all the positions. But he does lack a bit of creativity, and the whole Everton team lacks a bit of creativity. And to expect it from him, I think, is a bit unfair on him. However, I do think the whole team needs to be a bit more creative. You've got the likes of Damari Gray and Dominic Alvaluan up front. DCL, I am I always try to give him the benefit of the doubt, especially because he's always injured, but it's not his fault because obviously no Premier League player wants to be injured. They all want to be playing. They all want to be out there playing for 90 minutes on the weekend. But at some point, he has to start banging in the goals the same way that Richarlison did at the back end of last season because without him... Everton are screwed, Everton are down, Everton are finita, they're the team that's definitely going down without Dominic Cavalier and he needs to start scoring and he needs to start scoring now because he doesn't have to score many goals, he just ha won a game, Everton needs to score one a game and just grind out results, nil nils, one nils and they can't do that, they're not keeping clean sheets, not scoring goals and obviously there's a larger picture of what's going on with the board and the owner I've seen some Everton fans have a go at Mashiri, and uh, while I, it's not my football club, so I can't say so, you're completely entitled to if you want to. I think Mashiri has put in the money. I think more so the board, which is what a lot, I've seen a lot of Everton fans getting angry about, are the ones to blame. Because if you constantly hire incompetent managers and then you constantly buy players at an overpriced fee, and then you there constantly, and then you keep sacking the manager. Of course, the club is going to be in the position that they are now. And I think for Frank Lampard now to now be in a position where he's worse off than when he first joined is remarkable. I think before the game, Everton were four points worse off this season than they were last season. So they've got to do even better than they did last year. And I don't doubt that they can do it because you saw it at the end of last season. The fans getting behind the team, the players really galvanising themselves and the performances. Goodison Park being a fortress. But I don't see how they're going to do it this season unless they decide to sack Frank Lampard and invest in the squad. And it's not always nice saying the manager should be sacked. However, should he be getting more out of these current set of players? I think so. I think he should be getting more out of these current set of players and ultimately that should be the benchmark for a manager. Are you getting the most out of the players that you have? Yes. Then in that case, the players are at fault because they're clearly not producing the results for you on the pitch. However, these, pl these players aren't performing to their best and that's why you have to look at Frank Lampard and ask him, are you the right man for this moment? And I don't think he is. And it's never nice saying that because I'm saying that I think Frank Lampard should be sacked. But if it's not Frank Lampard, then I don't think, I don't know how Everton survive. I don't know how they stay in the Premier League this season. Because the board is an issue. 100% the board is an issue. Most of them, if not all of them, need to go. They need a whole new board needs to come in, a new way of thinking, a new direction for the club. However, is that going to save Everton from being relegated this season? Maybe. But I don't think so. that's the issue right now. That needs to be fixed right now. And that's controversial for Everton fans to hear because you probably say the board needs to go. You might argue that the board and Frank Lampard needs to go and the whole set of players needs to go. Maybe the owner, the, everyone at the club needs to go. But I think you need Frank Lampard needs to go. I think you've got 10 days left in the transfer window. You bring in the manager. Who? I don't know. I mean, the obvious one that everyone talks about is Sean Dyche. However... I think it came out that he said in an interview he was a Liverpool fan, and I, I don't. He hasn't. He doesn't have the affinity with the club in the professional sense, in the fact that he hasn't managed them before, he hasn't played for them before. But with Rafa Benitez being appointed last season, the way that went, I think maybe not. Maybe that's not the way you go. Who do you get? Do you bring? I mean, do you bring Big Sam back to try and have another go saving from relegation? It's just an absolute mess. And I think the fact that no one can say 
do this and we survive is the biggest issue because you just kind of look, you kind of sat there and just thinking this club is going down. And football is a funny game. One win and the entire complexion and the entire mood around the club changes. But at this moment in time, I can't help but see that Frank Lampard needs to go. Otherwise, I think Everton are going to get relegated. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Do you think I'm right in saying I think Frank Lampard getting sacked would be the right thing and be a step forward for Everton? Of course, I think the whole board needs to go, but I don't know how you fix that. Who do you think should replace Frank Lampard? What a win for West Ham. West Ham fans should thoroughly enjoy today's performance. It wasn't your best performance. However, it's all about the three points today against a team who are very close relegation rivals. So let me know. What do you think? Who should replace Frank Lampard and West Ham? Where can you end up this season?